Going hot! Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I am joined today by Chris, who is a former Marine Corps armorer who works for Bear Arms down in Scottsdale. This is Bear Arms reference collection Browning M2. So we just took a look at the internals and the history of this and how it works yesterday. If you didn't see that video, you should go back and check it out. Today, we're going to do some shooting with it. But you may notice there's no barrel in it. This is a serious piece of equipment. This isn't just, you know, another AR that you throw down on the range and do some shooting. There's some basically mechanical, sort of mechanical safety checks we have to do first, and that would be setting the headspace and the timing of the gun. So let's start us off here. What are headspace and timing? So headspace is going to be essentially the distance between the breech face of the bolt in here and the actual uh, chamber of the barrel itself. And we have a uh, headspace gauge, which is uh, that piece right there. It has a go side and a no go side. And we're going to pull this charging handle back a 16th of an inch once we've got the barrel in there and check that the go side goes in and the no go side does not. So the idea with this is the barrel's removable, which is important for moving this thing around because it's like 100 pounds with the, the barrel in the gun. And not only is the barrel removable, but the barrel is adjustable. So you can actually adjust the headspace. Now, on normal firearms, the headspace is adjusted once at the factory. They put the barrel in, set the headspace, and fix the barrel in place with a cross pin or some other mechanism. And that's so that you don't have to deal with this every time you want to go shooting. The idea with these guns is that they wanted to be able to continue to use the barrels even if they were shot a lot and the headspace started to change. You just readjust the headspace and you can keep shooting them because that's a really expensive, huge, stellite lined barrel. Yep. So, uh, so we'll go through that process. And then we also have timing. Now, timing is something we generally also don't have to deal with on a normal gun. What is that? Timing is essentially going to be the um, the time at which the trigger is actuated and fires the gun. Um, and we need to make sure that that's not going to happen too far out of battery, essentially. So if the, uh, if the bolt is open too far, uh, the gun won't be able to fire. Okay. We don't want that to happen. So we have a, another go and no-go gauge that we'll use to determine that. Okay. I'm going to let Chris take over here and show you exactly how that process is done. So, uh, the first step of headspace and timing is going to be installing the barrel. Um, in order to do that, we're going to need to pull the charging handle back just slightly. There is a barrel locking detent you can see through a window here in the side of the gun. And as we pull that back to the right spot, it should look a little bit further, just like that. And then we'll be able to thread the barrel in. Like so, until it goes all the way. And once it's all the way, we're going to back it off two clicks. Is it right in? Two. Two. All right. So we backed it off two clicks, and that's our starting position for headspace. Now, you're actually using the charging handle there as a click indicator, right? Or the, the carry handle. Essentially, yeah. That's pretty cool. So I was just using, I, I usually grab it right about here because it gives you a little bit more texture to grab onto and move it. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull this back about a sixteenth of an inch and we're going to take our go side, it says go right there, and shove that in and it does not go in so we're going to need to adjust the barrel a little bit further. So you can put that in the window again, I'm going to back it off another click, try it again, and that went to the ring. So that's what we, uh, what we want, we want it to go all the way to that center ring of the go gauge, and we turn it to the no-go side. I should put firm pressure on it, enough to leave a mark in your hand, but not you don't need to you know jam that thing in there, um, and it should not go in, just like it does. So, all right, so that's our headspace done. Um, now all that's left is gonna be timing. Do that. We remove the back plate of the gun. Let me put that off to the side for a second. Um, and we have a timing wheel in here. It's this right here. Now to start the timing, what we do is we turn it 15 positions clockwise. So I'm going to push that, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. All right, so we're going to start right there. We take our go gauge side right here, and these are angled cut. And they need to be angled this way as we put them right here between the receiver and the barrel itself just like that. And what we're gonna do is attempt to fire the gun. So I pull up on the trigger bar, nothing happens, so I'm gonna back that up, one click, try again. Nothing happens, back it up, one click, 
Try again. And we're just gonna keep going down one click at a time until I can get that gun to fire. Now you basically already had this set when we came. We did, out. yeah. So I just wanted to show you the full, um, the full process. Probably going to be approximately 15 clicks. Yeah, probably. <laughs> right about. We keep doing this until we get a fire. There it goes. There it went. So once we got it fired, I'm going to take that gauge out real quick. And I'm going to recharge the gun, put it back forward again. All right. We're gonna put the no-go side in and turn this two more clicks. So we already went um, several clicks back to right where it's fired, but we wanna be in the middle of the timing schedule. So we turn it two more clicks and we're gonna put the no-go side in now. So we put the no-go side in and then uh, we're gonna again attempt to fire the gun. It should not fire on the no-go side. Then we just double check it by flipping it back to the go. And Attempt to fire, it fires. So that's the gun, headspace and timed. We just reinstall our back plate. And the gun's ready to go. All right, so we're just gonna go over a quick loading procedure real quick. Uh, first off, we're gonna open the top cover. Uh, we grab our belt and make sure we grab the female link so we want the, the two end link uh, going this way. We never wanna see one link on that side. Uh, we're going to place these uh, just on the other side of the pawl here and line it up just like so. We can go ahead and close the cover at that point. We can put the gun, right now it's on the semi-automatic mode right here, so we're going to put it onto full auto by pressing that button in and rotating this around to lock it in place. And at that point we'll grab the charging handle, run it once, run it twice, and now the gun is ready to fire. Just flip the safety off and you're ready to go. All right, just one last note. We have this on the Pintle locked in, in horizontal elevation. This is the mode, if you had this Pintle on a vehicle, which is what it was designed for, this is the traveling mode so that the gun doesn't bounce around. And I, just to get started on this at least, I wanna know that I'm not gonna be sending rounds up over the back end of the berm. So uh, we do have a giant mountain as our backstop, but still a little control is a good thing. So take the safety off, going hot. You can certainly tell there is a lot of power coming out the end of that thing. This jumps around even on a really remarkably stable sort of mount. So uh, yeah, I think we'll try this with the elevation unlocked. All right, now we can move this thing. That's an interesting gun to try and keep your sights on target with. It really bounces around, even as heavy as this thing is. I said this already, but on, we effectively have six legs of a mount here, and it's still bucking and rolling when you shoot, especially with the tripod elevation unlocked. you guys enjoyed the video thanks for watching